everyone and welcome to Miss Estric Biology and in this video I'm going to be talking through the five most common mistakes that students make in exams. Exams can be stressful and challenging but if you can avoid these mistakes you are far more likely to succeed. So I'm going to talk you through what those mistakes are and give you strategies and tips to make sure that you avoid them. So let's get into it. So exam mistake number one is poor time management. Within the exam, obviously you've got a set amount of time and all the times you've practiced in class, you've probably only done about half that amount of time. So for example, most students will do an hour test in lessons, but your A-levels are usually about two hours long. So with the exception of your mock exams, you've probably never done a two hour exam in literally exam conditions in your school you need to make sure that you are prepared to sit down for two hours solid writing and thinking. So make sure you do practice a few times doing two hour papers and see do you fit everything in. Now to help make sure you do fit everything in, I've got some key strategies to make sure that you don't run out of time. Because running out of time obviously means you're gonna miss marks. You might end up missing a whole chunk of questions. You might rush through some questions when maybe you look at the clock and realize you've got only 20 minutes to go. So you then whiz through the rest, answer them all, but probably don't do very well. So here is how to avoid that, to make sure that you can fit everything in into the allotted time. Now, most of these are gonna be specific for AQA, but check your exam board to see if it fits yours as well. But for me, number one for AQA is bullet point your answers. You can bullet point every single question in AQA biology except the essay. And in the mark scheme, they literally present it as a bullet point list. So that is what you should be doing. It will speed up your writing so much. You'll be more concise. It'll prevent you from waffling. It will help you also to consider, have you got a key marking point and you've got the same number of bullet points that the question is worth. So definitely bullet point your answers. That will save your time in writing it and checking it. Now, the next two tips are definitely AQA specific. And the first one is about paper one an exact strategy I have for you to maximize the number of marks and to speed up your time on paper one. And that is go straight to the back of paper one as soon as the exam starts. And the reason for that is the last question on paper one is 15 marks of long answer questions. And they'll either be split as three five mark questions or it'll be a four, a five, and a six mark question. And these are what they call the extended response questions, which are usually just based on knowledge. So questions like compare and contrast an electron and an optical microscope, or describe protein synthesis. So those questions, assuming that your knowledge is really good, you are far more likely to bank 15 marks than you would be on some of those more challenging application questions, which take a long time to read through the information, process it, and then come to an answer. Whereas these ones, if you've done your revision, then when you see those questions, you should be able to know pretty quickly what you need to include, bullet point in those answers, and then you've banked, hopefully, 15 marks. That should then build up your confidence, go back to the start of the paper and work your way through. Now, the reason it's so important to do it that way round, as well as banking those questions early, boosting your confidence at the start, is just in case you do run out of time, that would mean you miss those easy marks at the end of the paper. And that's happened to so many students. They end up spending loads of time on the really challenging questions where there's lots to read, lots to think about. And then they don't even get onto those questions at the back and they miss the opportunity to bank 15 marks, which is easily the difference between a grade. Now, my next tip is linked to paper three for AQA, which is the essay. Now, the essay is at the back of paper three. And what I recommend to speed up your entire process on paper three is go straight to the back and read the two essay titles. Don't do the essay first just read those two titles and then go to the front, work your way through the exam questions, leave yourself 40 to 45 minutes to write the essay. The reason it's so important to read those two titles first is while you're then doing the rest of the questions, your brain will subconsciously be considering those two titles, which would be better for you. And it'll be thinking about which would be potential topics to include. And as you're answering the questions, you'll probably get ideas as well. So when you then get to the back in the last 45 minutes to write your essay, you should be able to come up with a plan really quickly because your brain's been ticking through this the whole way through. And that will then speed up your essay writing 
and improve the quality of it. Exam mistake number two is not reading the question or the information properly. This is such a common reason students lose marks. And often people will say, oh, I lost marks because I made silly mistakes. This is definitely a silly mistake and one to really practice avoiding. So what I suggest is to make sure that you don't misread the question or misread the emphasis of the question is as you're going through it, underline the command word. So that is describe, explain, suggest. So what are they literally asking you to do? And make sure you're underlining every part of the question. Because sometimes they might say, describe the process of blah, 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 and explain. And sometimes students just see the describe, jump straight into it and miss the second half of the question. So it is worth taking the time to read the question properly underlining the command words, maybe circling extra bits of information as well to check you are definitely answering what you've been asked to do. Now linked to this as well is misreading the information or not even reading the information at all. So if a question says, use the information in your answer, that doesn't necessarily just mean literally the paragraph above or a graph above. If it says use the information, it could mean from part A or part B of that question. So you have to read all of the information in that question and look at everything that might be relevant to that question. So the way that I try and approach those kinds of questions is when you're reading the information, I underline what they've told you in maybe a method or um, I'll annotate the data to really see the patterns and understand the information before even getting onto the exam question. And I know you might be thinking, surely that takes a lot of time. It doesn't. If you practice doing this when you're doing your past papers in your revision, you'll become really quick at it. It'll become second nature. And then what you actually find is when you get to the questions, you'll be even faster and you write a better quality of answer. Now, if you do want to see me modeling this then join my weekly lives every Tuesday on Instagram or TikTok. I do this for you every week. I answer exam questions and I show you exactly how I would answer them and you can see just how I apply that idea. Exam mistake number three is leaving questions blank. This goes without saying if you write nothing you are getting no marks. So even if you think you've got no clue at all write something you might bank at least one mark and that one mark could be the difference between a grade. So for example Example, you might see a question and it's loosely linked to enzymes or maybe explicitly linked to enzymes, but you're thinking, I haven't got a clue. Write enzyme substrate complexes. Just write that phrase linked to something in the question and that is probably worth a mark. So that is one strategy. If you've got no clue at all, identify the topic, think about for that topic, what is a typical key marking point and try and at least throw in one sentence with that key term in and you'll probably find you get a mark. And this goes for the maths questions as well. I know some of you see maths questions and you skip them straight away because you think, I haven't got a clue, I need to save time. But often with these exam questions, even if you just do at least one step of it, like reading something off a graph, you will get one mark or with the Hardy-Weinberg equation, just by stating what you are trying to work out, like TPQ, you get a mark for that. So even if you have got no idea, please don't leave anything blank. Put something in there, which might at least bank you one mark, then carry on and if you have time, come back at the end and try and add to it. Exam mistake number four is actually more linked to your revision. And this is students not dedicating enough time to practicing. Sometimes students get into this idea of I have to review all the content. I have to keep looking over it, reading my notes, checking through, making sure that I know everything. And obviously you do, but if you don't spend enough time practicing exam questions, then you won't have any practice or very little practice of applying that knowledge and your A-level will be 45% application questions. It'll be 10% maths, and it'll be 15% practical skills. So that all adds up, and a very small percentage compared to all of those will be just your knowledge. So if you are not putting in the time doing practice exam questions, then you are really putting yourself at a disadvantage. So make sure that to help you with this, come up with a revision timetable where yes, dedicate some time to maybe going through flashcards, blurting, checking that you know the information, but you should then be spending more time going through exam questions. So at this point, when you're watching this video, you should be predominantly just doing exam questions. And then if you are stuck on the question, that is when it directs you back to look over that content. 
not the other way around where you look at the content and then do exam questions. Nope, save yourself the time, go straight into exam questions. If you get stuck, then maybe spend 10 minutes looking over the theory. And that's a much better strategy this close to the exams. Exam mistake number five is panicking and losing focus in the exam. Now I know that's not gonna be something you're going into an exam planning to do to sit there and panic, but it can happen. So the mistake is not thinking beforehand how you will manage that situation if it happens. And it does happen sometimes. It happens to all of us. It happened to me in my final exam at university. I went into absolute panic. My mind went blank. So here are the sorts of things that you can do to bring yourself back into a focused, calm state so that you can then answer the questions. So some of the strategies that you can try before the exam to see what works best for you is different breathing techniques can work really well. So if you just Google or go onto YouTube and search breathing techniques to manage anxiety or panic, there will be a whole range of things you can look at. Practice those breathing techniques and then if in the exam you do start to panic or lose focus, just spend 30 seconds doing your breathing techniques and it will calm you back down, refocus you and you'll be able to continue. All sorts of things you can do before the exam is visualization techniques and this actually has been proven to work really well. So visualize yourself in the exam. Picture where you're gonna be sat, what you're gonna have out in front of you, your test paper, you might have a bottle of water, your pen, and picture yourself doing really well in that exam. Picture yourself answering the questions. Picture yourself doing all the strategies that I've talked you through. And that visualization helps because then when you're in the exam, it's like you've been doing practices of how it's going to go. And it really helps you and your brain to calm and remain focused because you know what you're going to do. And then the other thing you can try is positive self-talk. You need to be talking to yourself, either out loud if you're doing this in practice, but in your head in the exam, talk to yourself positively, remind yourself of your strengths, what you're good at, everything you've done that you need to have faith in that will make sure that you do well. Remind yourself of all the hard work you've been putting in, the revision plan you've followed, the strategies that you know, and you just need to tell yourself you have done the work, you are able to do this. You can pick up marks. You are going to do it. You're going to smash it and have that chat with yourself in your head in the exam. And that could be really effective for you. So try some of those strategies beforehand. See what you feel works best for you. And if in the exam you do find that you start to panic or you lose focus, try one of those strategies. So that is it for our five key exam mistakes that students make and how to avoid them. So just bear in mind and remember, everyone makes mistakes, but the key is what can you do in advance to try and minimize the mistakes that you make and prepare yourself as best as possible so you can go into those exams confident, ready to smash them. So best of luck with your revision and make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any of my final revision tips and advice before every single paper.